The thing about an Australian childhood is that you're always surrounded by nature. Even after school, my friends and I would play <laughs> play in the sticks or play in the bush. Be all these eucalyptus trees and it'd be perfect for playing hide and seek. There's no place like Australia. There's just no place that is so diverse and so culturally mixed. It's just mixed up. And the people are so nice. The people are so sweet. Very interesting history as well. Convicts come into an island, create hundreds of years forward, a very interesting film industry. Hope to be a part of it. Well, one day at least. Gotta make my way up to the top. They always say, Kyla, just wait. Just wait and home and away will call. And I'm like, I'm waiting. But until then, who knows? Oh, I'm waiting. I really like living here. I'd love to live in Sydney one day. Sydney is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever seen in my whole life. Maybe one day I'll make it there. <laughs> there is just something so special about living in a place where you can take a surf in the morning. You know, we can just take your board out to the beach and ride waves until noon. And it's so easy to forget how lucky we are to live here. And you know, it's large, but it's not so large that you can't drive your car from city to city. You can do that. You can go around the whole country. It's a country and a continent. I think it's the only place that's um, both. Beautiful coral reefs. God, I hope that they stay. There's so many things endangering them and threatening them. I just hope that the world gets its act together and we can protect what's special. Hi, uh, I'm Kim. I was an addict. I'm now I'm nine months clean. What happened? Um, when I was 16, I was babysitting my little brother and I was... Well, I'd, I'd taken all these Percocet and I was unbelievably high and I... Um, we'd driven over to the park on Lakeshore and he was in his red socks. He was just running around these piles of leaves and... Uh, he would bury me and I would bury him in the leaves and he was pretending he was a train. And so he was charging through the leaves making tracks and I uh, I was the, 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 the caboose so he kept saying, call caboose, call caboose and we were, um, uh, it was getting late, it was time to go and uh, I was driving home and I lost control of the car. And I drove off the bridge, and the car went into the lake, and I, I couldn't get him out of his car seat, and he drowned. And. I struggle with God so much because I can't forgive myself. And I don't. I don't really want to right now. I can live with it. But I can't really forgive myself. And sometimes I don't want to believe in a God that could forgive me. I want to stay off the drugs. I'm alive. I'm alive. And I'm present. And there's nothing controlling me. If I hurt someone, I hurt someone. I can apologize and they can forgive me or not. But I can change.
and I just I just want to share that and say congratulations that God makes you look up. I'm so happy for you. But if he doesn't, come here. That's all. Thank you. I shot someone. I killed him. Sorry I didn't tell you sooner, but I was hoping to be long gone before anything became of it. I didn't want you involved. Look, you've been real good to me. You're the only friend I got out here, and if Trooper's got 165 blocked, that means I got out of the roads blocked too, so I ain't gonna get nowhere in a car. I wanna get this boat fixed. See if we can get in the water. My sister Jean, see. She made a mistake. Hooked up with this guy, he was no good. His name was Hutchins. His family owned a chain of restaurants down in Adelaide. Jane would meet up with him, he'd sell on a pack of lies, and got her pregnant. Then he started showing who he really was. He dropped her down a flight of stairs after whooping her half to death. And she lost the baby. He made it so the doctors say she can't even have children anymore. There are things you can get away with in this world. There are things you can't. I tracked him down. Found him outside a little motel in Sydney. He was there. With another woman. That's where it happened. So I can understand if you don't want to help me no more. But I need this boat. And I need to get it in the water fast. I made a list of things that we're going to need. What do you think? I have changed the name of the character in case there's any copyright issues with what television show this is for. Carly Maguire, age 27. Very gorgeous, super intelligent, and with a bit of a free spirit to bounce her along in life, Carly is one of those girls who is popular with both men and women. What's not to like? She's friendly, warm, fun to be with, she's not overly self-involved, and has good self-esteem. A no-nonsense type. Carly has a great sense of humour and is always willing to roll her sleeves up and get dirty when the need presents. From a large suburban family in Sydney, Carly was happily socially happily happy socially at school, though she was a little rebellious at home during her teenage years. She didn't study too hard, but she didn't flunk either. She's a pretty well balanced person. In the market for a few adventures at the end of school, Ava went with a group of friends to Croatia, Portugal and Spain for an excellent gap year. She met a guy from Queensland and they hooked up when they got back to Australia. She moved to Queensland to be with him and started a pharmacy degree at Darling Downs University. The, relation, the relationship didn't last, but the course did. She, made a, she met a lot of friends and had a lot of fun, and her bestie was Miranda. After completing pharmacy, she worked for a while as a junior in a chemist shop in Brisbane, but she did enjoy being face to face with the public. She moved on to a hospital pharmacy job, which was more satisfying, and she was good at it. She moved on to a hospital, but shifts were hard to come by as it soon became obvious that there were too many pharmacists on the market. Packing up, she went north instead, travelling and driving trucks in the, in the territory for a while. In the territory, she met a man, had some casual flings, some good, some bad. She worked on a fishing trawl as a cook for a few months, spending weeks on end at sea, swimming in crock infested waters and taking things as they came. A free spirit and a thirst for life kept her going for a few years, but a relationship with a fly-in, fly-out guy in Darwin was a heartbreaker and she finally felt ready to come back home to Sydney. When I was a kid, 
I started this thing where I wrote down every good thing and every bad thing that I had ever seen or had done to me. And I drew it up in this school exercise book and I called it the ledger. The ledger. <laughs> I got a ruler and I drew a line down every page and one column was good things and one column was bad things. Uh, some kid lets down my bike tires. Bad thing. Uh, some neighbor lends another neighbor a bucket of oranges. That's a good thing. Uh, my dad says something horrible to my mum. It's a bad thing. Uh, he comes crawling back with a wrapped box of jewellery or something. Mm, good thing. It, well, it's... It's a bad thing. You see, I... Um, I kept... I kept the ledger for like three years. And as I got older, I started to realise that some things that appeared good were actually bad. And some things that seemed bad might have been good. So I had to start this whole new column. And I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I called it, mmm, <laughs> like seven M's or something. Mmm. And then everything started to fall into this mmm column. Because I couldn't make sense of what was good, what was bad anymore, what was right or what was wrong. Mm hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it right there. It's that. Mm. Life is just one big. Mm. <sighs> I. I can't stay long. Actually, I have a class. I'm, I'm teaching pole dancing. It really works your core. So what's this about? What did he do? She doesn't like you. You turned her away when she asked you for help. Then you said you'd call the police and social services? You know how some people who get Goldilocks is a bedtime story? Well, the story I got was about how the bitch ruined our lives. The black bitch, actually. It's not a great conversational opener. She blames you for ruining our lives. I... I did. But for a while. But now I've met you and I can make up my own mind. It's hard to say. She's struggled with it. I can take care of my mother, all right. Thank you very much for listening to this. Again, my name is Kyla Nelson. Uh, this was a video to show you my Australian accent, and I will add my email address if you'd like to contact me in the description below. Thank you very much.